Welcome, Welcome to, to the Mother Daughter Ish podcast. podcast. It's your mama's favorite podcast. And the podcast your daughter always wanted. This is Miss Dawn. And Anjali. From the 713. Houston, y'all. Get connected and stay connected weekly as new shows debut on Sunday, Wednesday, and please check out our Saturday Out and About showcases. Enjoy the show. Please subscribe, like, share, comment, and tell every woman on the planet that you know about our show. Here's our show for today. May the 15th and it is Sunday and I am so excited because I'm going to talk to you today about day tripping and you probably say what is she talking about the day tripping festival that's in California every year no no that's actually a real event it's kind of like a, a music festival and it's called day tripping and it's a whole festival. I'm going to put the information up on the video at the end for you to check it out. I looked at it and I'd never heard of it before. But when I looked at it and I saw that this was an actual event that brings in like hundreds of thousands of people, I was like, okay, well, I guess I d- didn't know anything about that. But today's conversation on day tripping is going to be about those quick day trips that you can have. Now, a lot of my conversation is going to be if you live in Texas or if you live in Houston, places you can go within two to four hours from where you are. So if you live in other cities, the only thing you have to do is just look up what cities or what locations are two to four hours from you. And it could be something. And I think the reason why I thought about this being a conversation is because yesterday, Peyton and myself, we went to Dallas, actually DeSoto, Texas. And while we were there, we found a nice restaurant to Uh, do a review on. If you haven't watched yesterday's show for Saturday, make sure that you check out the, what is it, Crab Kings, Crab with a K, and Kings with a Z on the end. They were so good. We found them in Dallas and it was good. And I thought, you know, it's so easy to just get up and go because we left at 6 a.m. We were back home and I was in my bed by seven. That's my idea of a great day trip. So right now I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, maybe what you should do to Uh, start planning a day trip you know uh, one thing that I do when I plan a trip is I set limits what time we leaving what all we gonna do put as many things together and then dwindle them down when we get there depending on how we feel and then what time are we going to be back so that we know okay four o'clock the fun's over we got to drive back it's two hours it's four hours it's whatever that's what we're going to do so set some limits on whatever the trip is going to be. And then also limits on, are we going to go an hour away, 45 minutes? Are we going to go two hours away, hour and a half? Or are we going to go f- as far as four hours away? So like if I said, okay, where can I go in four hours and go there and come back? I would say, I'm going to go to Baton Rouge. Uh, I'm going to go to Dallas. Uh, I'm going to go right outside of San Antonio. Um, wow, I can pass, I can stop in Dallas. I mean, I can stop in Austin and do some things and then go a little bit further outside of Austin and do some things. So just thinking about those things that you can really uh, set some boundaries on. And I like that also because it helps you to plan better, especially when you're going to go with three or four people. Maybe they may not be as organized as you are. And by the way, for those of you that are watching the show today, you're getting a little bit of a sneak peek of the new studio. This is our jungle wall behind me. It's not finished. So when it's finished, I'll give you more of a tour of it. But right now uh, I have these two trees camouflaging the middle part that I haven't finished, but you're getting a sneak peek. And if you look a little bit over this way, you can get a picture of our tulip wall. Um, It's a little bit of the tulip wall. I just wanted to kind of show y'all that, Um, but that's our jungle back there. I, I wanted a space for us that would feel like indoor outdoor. So when it's all said and done, before June is over, we'll have our sofa area where we can have conversations. We'll have our window area. We'll have our all seeing eye area. We've got our bookshelf area. We've got a barn door and, and jungle wall on this side. And then we've got our full jungle wall, like straight to the jungle back here. And then we'll have our tulip wall. I need it to create a space where we have at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight 
angles to be able to have some fun, but welcome to the jungle, which is great because since I'm talking about day tripping, you could literally go somewhere that looks like this during the daytime, no matter where you are. There's always a beach somewhere. There's always some kind of uh, hiking you could do, always. Uh, the next thing I would say would be to anticipate your meals. Now, look, if I'm going on a trip where I'm not sure about the food or I'm just maybe not that hungry that damn fast and I'm dieting, whatever, I am quick to take some crackers and peanut butter, some juice, some water, uh, some peanuts, just some snacks that I want to take, some fruit or something like that, because maybe the focus was not going to find a place to eat. Maybe it was a, we're going to go join this event, this expo or whatever, and we're coming back home. So we just take some snacks with us or something. So always plan your meals out so that you don't get to the end of the day and you're starved out and you're angry and, and you're ready to go home and you're mad at everybody else because they ain't hungry, <laughs> things like that. All right establish your budget i can't tell you how many times i have gone on international even trips with people who didn't think like i was thinking and my thinking process is you take some cash you take some cards and then you have at least a couple of hundred dollars folded up in a zipper part in your purse where nobody can find it even if you leave that that purse in the room somewhere and somebody rambles through it they would never think to find it because it's a secret area in there unless they take the whole purse then you're out of luck but always establish a budget on what you're going to spend but not just what you're going to spend but what you will get down to the bones let's just say we go to vegas we're going to fly out to vegas we're going to have some money to spend if you say you're only spending three hundred dollars that's all you're spending. For me, if I say I'm gonna spend $300, I'm spending 150 probably. So I'm just saying I'm cheap like that. But you know, establish you a budget so that, that you won't get caught up in, my notes over here, that you won't get caught up in that situation where you're having to ask your friends to borrow $20 and they probably don't even have it because they maybe didn't budget, right? Uh, the other thing is gonna be is, um, plan the route out like for example yesterday when um Peyton and me got ready to leave my G we're both sitting in the same car in at the same address in the same neighborhood my GPS told me to leave here and go one freeway her GPS told her two other routes one was a back way up to a freeway mine was a back way all the way through we literally could have went the back way got off Texas 6 went through Corsicana, hopped up on 45 and been there. But her GPS told her to go 290 around to I-45 and 45 all the way through Sam Houston to Dallas. And it was like, I was sitting there going, I don't know why our GPS has gave us different routes, but this is weird. Um, I, maybe she knows that I don't like to drive on the toll because I don't like to pay tolls. I don't want to pay to drive. Um, maybe she was trying to bypass going on 99 which we could have you know went down texas 6 and not went on 99 but was on the same route to there but it's just weird how her gps told her one thing and my gps told me another thing and since she was the driver for the day i didn't say nothing i just was like okay whatever uh the next one is gonna be to prep your car um before i leave i usually like to have the tires checked i like to have you know any uh, lights checked on the car. I like to make sure, you know, it's clean. There's nothing I left in the car that needs to be in the house. Um, car washing and all that, it's like, if we're going to the dirt, it, what's the purpose of that? But I mean, just your safety checks, just to make sure that everything's okay. And that's even if I'm just going two hours away, I'm still gonna get the tires and stuff. If I go an hour away, I'm gonna get the tires checked and all of that. And since the tires where I purchased them, I have a lifetime rotation, air check, you know, all of that. Might as well go ahead and do it. And then prepare your stuff. So like yesterday, we went to go meet with a, a group of about 10 people. And I have like a little small mini, maybe a little small mini suitcase, not that big. And in there, I had all the stuff that I needed to talk to them about. I had my laptop in there. I had my um, my um, lights in there in case we shoot a video or something. I had uh, pens and paper in there. I had scratch paper in there. I had... Um, my iPad in there. I had my tripod. I had all kinds of stuff in that little small bag so that I could just 
grabbed that bag in my purse and we left that morning because I tend to be an hour ahead of schedule and ready to go. And I would rather get there and find something to do. And Peyton's usually about five minutes before. Okay, five minutes before, okay, let's go. Or 10 minutes late. So I have to prepare myself because I'm only in control of me. So that's kind of where we are on that. Okay. Now, when I was looking up different places to go, that would be within four hours of me. Look, let me tell you how lucky I am. Let me tell you something. So within two hours of where I live, I can go to Austin and be back in the day. I did that for over 20 years while I was working a particular program within my business. And I would go to Austin and meet with clients all the time. It'd be like, I go to Austin and I come back and be home by two o'clock. You know, so that to me, Austin is, is so cool. It's only two hours. I can go to Lafayette within three hours, three or four hours, go straight up I-10 and I'm in Lafayette. I can stop in Scott, Louisiana at Billy's and get some boudin, some cracklings, some boudin balls, some gumbo and their special tea that they have there. I can then go right across from them, go a little bit down the freeway and go to Hebert's and get some crackling if I want to get some from there. I'm kind of torn between the two because I like both of them. And then once I'm in Lafayette, whatever I want to do, if I decide, you know what, I got another 45 minutes, I'm going to go straight on up to Baton Rouge. So it's like, know your little areas. Like right now, if I say, man, I just really want to go spend some time by the beach. I would go ahead and plan a trip and go straight to Corpus Christi. That's three hours away. And I get a little bit of fun of a straight route. I get another fun of I get to ride on the water ferry to get across to Corpus. Then if I want to go to the uh, Selena Museum, that's right there. I get to go over a beautiful bridge. And if I go at nighttime, the bridge is usually lit up. And then once I make it to Mustang Island, I can stay at a condo that's very affordable right in front of the beach when I look out the door on the balcony every day, maybe even doing a show from there. So Corpus Christi is just what I lovingly say, it's right up the road. Uh, the next thing is I can go to Waco. We do Waco, you know, at least a couple times a year because I have a car club that meets in Waco. We call it the Waco Run for the Mini Coopers. So we meet in Waco once a year, maybe a couple of hundred of us. And Waco to me is a day trip I go at you know seven o'clock in the morning meet with my group at nine we travel on down to Waco do whatever we're going to do if there's food trucks we eat we do door prizes or we go to a restaurant we sometimes do both eat off the food truck and then turn around and go to the restaurant and then the next thing I'm at home I'm at home by seven o'clock I'm in my bed I'm good <laughs> Um, the other thing is uh, Lockhart Lockhart is right outside of Austin you know you can go up to Lockhart you can go to Fredericksburg you can go to so many places up in the hill country where you not only will get a good view as you're driving up there around the windy roads and the hill country but you can also uh, find some really delicious restaurants and barbecue places and all of that. Uh, Port Aransas is just one of those places that I was just talking about and Port Aransas is right near Mustang Island which is uh, near Corpus Christi. Um, just some really good ideas. So I'm gonna also talk about uh, some other places that are close, I'll say within four hours of Houston, check this out. So if you ever get a chance and you're like on vacation and you say, we're gonna go to Houston. And the first thing people always ask me is, well, what, do, what is there to do in Houston? And so I always tell them, okay, let's first start with the food. Cause we have so much food from so many places that, I mean, you can't beat us in the food. We got every nationality of food here. So it's like, there's plenty, there's plenty of food that uh, can be had that, that, that will never, I don't believe that will ever be a problem. I'm trying to sit this thing here with my notes on it. Uh, I don't think that would ever be a problem of somebody telling me. If somebody came to Houston, they tell me, well, I just couldn't find no food. I would say, oh, okay. So you basically um, didn't even open your eyes because we got food everywhere. So look, a lot of these places I've been to, so I'm gonna tell you when I find them. Okay, so Salt Lake Barbecue is right up in Dripping Springs, Texas, which is right outside of Austin, maybe 30 to 45 minutes away. You get to go on a wonderful, long, windy road as you go up to the Salt Lake, or you can go to the one that's down about 30 minutes from downtown, um, from downtown Austin. I like the one in Dripping Springs only because that's the one I originally started with back in 2006. So I like to kind of go to that one. Um, there's a place called Pecan Lodge that you can go to from Houston. It's only three hours and 41 minutes. Uh, we've got, um, we've already done San Antonio. Uh, San Antonio, by the way, is only three hours from me. So that's very easy. As a matter of fact, I got a call from a lady today that wants me to help her with something and she's in San Antonio. And I said, oh, that's a wonderful day trip. Whenever you want me to come up there, let me know. I'll be there. So I got to tell Peyton now, okay, look, I know you drove me to Dallas this weekend, but 
in two weeks, maybe I'll get you to drive me to San Antonio. Shh, don't tell her. I always have to trick her into it some kind of way. But anyway, um, so many different places in Louisiana that you can go to. So many um, restaurants. We like to try new foods of different sorts. So there's just so many different places that we can go. But the other thing I want to say about a day trip is that it doesn't have to be expensive. Let me just give you a real idea. If I woke up tomorrow morning and I said, I think I want to go to Austin, Texas, uh, 35 bucks will fill my car up even in today's gas issues. Now I just, I just put $45 in the car today and it filled up the car. So if I wanted to take that $45 worth of gas, I could drive to Austin, Texas. I could get a great view. I could stop and get me some barbecue. Let's just say from the Salt Lake, spend about $20 if I wanted to there. If I wanted to have some barbecue leftover, food leftover or whatever. And then I could come back home on that same tank of gas and still drive around for the rest of the week around the neighborhood and in, in the community that I live in. And I still wouldn't have to fill up my tank until next week. I don't go a lot of places during the week. So that's why I wouldn't have to fill up my tank. So when I talk about day tripping, I'm talking about get five or six people together, maybe even two or three and get out of your community and go to the next one. For me, getting out of my community is going from Katy to Sugarland or going from Sugarland to Richmond or from Houston to Galveston. Think about it. I can get on one road Highway six, and I can take it all the way to the freeway to go to Galveston, hop up on the freeway, and in 20 minutes, literally be on the strand. Literally just be right there in Galveston, right there on the on the on the walk or on the strand or at the pier getting on the Ferris wheel. And it would only take me a couple of hours to get all of that done because I can get in Galveston. I can go to Galveston right now in 45 minutes. Um, let's say I wake up tomorrow and I said, oh man, I want to go down to Beaumont. Beaumont's got some good whatever, whatever they're known for. I could just say I got Beaumont. I can be there in an hour and a half. If I decided I'm going to go to Spring, Texas tomorrow. Spring, 45 minutes, I could be there. Okay. If I'm going to go further west, I could go you know, a little bit past Austin. If in San Antonio, I want to go a little further, I could go to Bernie, uh, B-O-E-R-N-E. -E. Most people call it Bourne, but it's Bourne, Texas. Um, again, Corpus Christi is only three and a half, three hours away from me. There's so many different places. Dallas, think about it. Dallas, DeSoto, Texas yesterday was only three hours and 26 minutes from my front door. So that was very easy. If I wanted to go to further places in Dallas, it might even take me, you know, four hours and 30 minutes. But to know that I have all of these opportunities around me is very exciting because there was one particular program that I did in partnership with uh, one of the federal uh, agencies. I went to Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, Warden County, Washington, got every little area you could think of on the outskirts of Houston within almost 13 or 14 counties maybe 16 counties that I served in. And then we were building a program in Louisiana. So one week out of the month, I would be in Baton Rouge. So if you think about a quick day trip, you could easily do a day trip. And then as you do that day trip, you might even want to sneak in a 24 hour trip where you just take a little overnight bag and you just spend the night and come back the next day. It just gives you a couple of three or four hours during that next day to get into a few more things if you wanted to do something. I'll tell you something fun. And my niece had told me, my niece, Missy, she had told me she had never been to a concert. She was about maybe 24, 25, something like that. And I was like, you've never been to a concert? Oh my goodness, you got to go to a concert. And at that time I had a hankering. I wanted to go to a Bo Lil Boosie concert because I was just like, that's the most ridiculous thing ever as far as a concert. It's going to be everything that I think a certain kind of concert should be. I'm not going to say what kind of certain concert that I think that is, but anybody who knows me, they know I've said it. Um, so I booked some tickets and I was like, Hey, the concert is so-and-so was during the month of December. I was like, concert is so-and-so let's go up to Louisiana. So we drove up to Baton, me, her and the kids, you know, um, everybody, we drove up to Baton Rouge. We stayed in the apartment. We, she and I got in the car that evening, went to New Orleans, Louisiana, which is an hour away, went to New Orleans, Louisiana, went to the Republic. We saw Boosie, had a good time, and everything on my certain kind of concert list, it checked off everything and then some, and then some. Let me tell you, we came back that night. We were back in the bed by three, four, five o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. We got up that next day, 
got some good food and headed back to Houston. So we literally were only there for like 48 hours, one hour to get, I mean, one day to get there, get together, went to the concert, stayed. It was literally a weekend. She was back at work on Monday morning, nice and fresh. And I still have video. I still have pictures that pop up on Facebook and other places that reminds me of what a really good time I had at the concert. It fulfilled something for her because she had never been to a concert. So I felt like, oh, this is great. I can take my niece to a first concert. But it fulfilled something for me because I wanted to see Boosie. I wanted those elements that I needed fulfilled at a concert that I had not seen in years or some of those things I'd never seen in my entire life and that burned into my memory. But anyway, well, that's my conversation today on day tripping. If you have not pulled in a couple of friends, a couple of family members, a couple of people and said, hey, how about we go down the road here? It's only two hours. You'll still be back home for your kids and husband and friends and, you know, to get ready the next day to do whatever it is you want to do. Let's just hang out today and go over here to so-and-so. Find out what's within an hour to two hours. If you don't like to be in a car that long, your max is three hours. Find out what's within three hours of you. And I say, go for it and do it. I say, do it. Because yesterday I was just like, it just kind of renewed my soul to be able to, just pick up again and go. I haven't done that since really COVID. We probably have, and I don't remember it. Yeah, I probably have, but don't remember it. Like yesterday, just kind of uh, invigorated something extra that said, I got to get back to these, these day trips, even if I have to go by myself. That's another thing. You can go by yourself. If other people don't want to go because they can't take the time, they don't want to spend the money, they don't want to be away, they don't like, I know people who can't even be in a car past two hours, they don't want to be in the car, they're debating about, do you want to drive or do I want to drive? I don't want to drive, you do all the driving, who going to pay for the gas? If they have all those issues, go by yourself. I'm telling you, uh, solo traveling is so amazing. As a matter of fact, next month, I've got a wonderful group of ladies that are going to come on and all we're going to talk about is solo traveling and some of our experiences, some, um, some of our fun, what's coming up soon all of those kind of fun things. So we're going to be talking about that in the month of June because look, we're going to be in the thick of the heat and everything. And here I am the other night. I was like, I can't wait until the world opens back up and we can travel without all the bans for traveling. And my mind said, go ahead and get on there and start looking it up. And let me tell you, I couldn't sleep for the next four hours because when I got on there and I Googled what places internationally can Americans go without all the pandemic restrictions. And when those 22 places came up, Jamaica came up, Granada came up, Aruba came up, Saudi Arabia came up, uh, Czech Republic came up, I was so excited. I just, um, it did something that touched my soul. But anyway, it was exciting. So I won't definitely um, advise you to travel internationally on a day trip because that's not going to work. Even though I did hear somebody say that when they wanted some pizza, they went to, you know, another country, got the pizza and flew back in. And I went, yeah, you'd have to have a private flight to do that where it would almost seem like a car ride. But I think that would be exciting. So if anybody wants to take me on a day trip international just to go and eat some special food, I am available. Thought I'd get that in, you know, just real quick. But uh, that's our show today about day tripping. Uh, Peyton or Angie, they'll be back soon. They've got their thing going on, but I say we got to keep the show going. So uh, that's our show for today, talking about day tripping. I cannot wait to put my list together for all. I already know what I'm doing in June, in July. Can't wait to put my list together for August. In September, I'm doing a very special show for my birthday. I'm going to be going to all of the little towns and showing you what's special about all the different sub suburbs outside of Houston. So look forward to that. And um, I mean, that's our show for today. And, and I'm, I'm pretty excited. Uh, bye for now. And until next time, make sure you're subscribing. Make sure that you're sharing the show with other women. Make sure that you are following us on Instagram, which is mother daughter ish with the underscore. If you look in the description box here, you're going to see all of that. You're going to see how to buy our book. You're going to see how to follow us. You're going to be able to look at our link tree to see what's going on. You'll be able to see what our motto is, what our focus is, what our goal is, what kind of hashtags we have on there and who we're reaching 
you'll be able to see it all. You'll be able to go and listen to us on audio if you want to, because we've got our links down there for Podbean. If you want to just listen to it in the car with your friends, that's another thing. When you do your day trip, line up you some podcasts that you can listen to that are focused on women. And then that way, maybe the person that you're with will be like, oh, wait a minute, this was fun. I learned something. I'm getting a ride in the car. You know, the air is feeling good in here. We get to a place, we get some good food. Wait a minute, hold up. Maybe this day trip and it's fun. And then maybe that person or those people will end up being your monthly day tripping partners. Because my goal is to at least do a day trip at least once a month, like I used to do before we went on lockdown and we all are just now recovering from all of that. So anyway, uh, that's our show for today. And uh, thank you for listening. Bye for now.